Hello, you are watching the 20th edition of DBE TV News. Welcome and thank you for tuning in as we bring you this weekly news update from the basic education sector. You are watching us either on Open View Channel 122, on the DBE YouTube channel, or on Bricks TV Channel 509 Starset. In the news this week, Matric learners are preparing to write their final exams from the 27th of October. The South African Depression and Anxiety Group speaks to us about how to handle exam stress and anxiety during this time. The Comprehensive Sexuality Education Workshops for school governing bodies and senior management teams continue in Gauteng. This bulletin will give information about what the various parties are receiving from these workshops. The new commissioners of the South African National Commission for UNESCO have been welcomed and inaugurated. They say they are ready to get to work and ensure that everyone is committed to education of a high quality. We then spend more time in KwaZulu-Natal, first at Mlokotwa Secondary School in Nongoma. Principal Vusmuzi Kumalo says they are aiming for a 100% pass rate for this year's matric learners. And at Nongoma Primary School, we speak to the principal about some of the challenges they face at the school. She, however, says she is very proud of her learners who make use of the school library and have shown their love for reading. It's another packed and exciting bulletin, but remember to get in touch with us using our social media platforms on Twitter at DBE underscore SA and at DBE TV News, Facebook DBESA, Instagram DBESA. You can use the hashtag DBE News. The South African Depression and Anxiety Group has urged matric learners to speak up, especially during this exam period. Matric learners have recently written their prelim exams and are now preparing for their final exams, which begin on the 27th of October. SADAC has urged learners to continue following a healthy eating plan before and during the exams. The advice comes as the exams are less than a month away. Make sure that you plan ahead, okay? What does that mean? It means creating a schedule, creating a schedule that you will be able to use, creating a schedule that you will be able to sustain and maintain and stick to, okay? So this is how your schedule would look like. For example, you, you are writing geography and you're writing mathematics first. You want to, in your schedule, put down chapter one of mathematics, chapter two of mathematics, chapter three on mathematics, five, six, seven, or you could say on a Monday, I'm going to start, I'm going to study maths. On a Tuesday, I'm going to study geography. On a Wednesday, it's going to be, um, uh, what else do you guys do? It's going to be technology, or it's going to be natural sciences, or it's going to be science. Whatever um, subjects that you are currently doing, put them on a schedule, put a time slot that I'm going to study between these and these times. And after you finish each and every chapter of studying, have a set time for you to examine yourself or to test yourself. Someone would ask me, where do I get the questions to test myself? Number one, you can use past question papers that your teachers have given you. You can download these past question papers from the internet. You can create your own examinations using the questions that you um, take from everything that you would have studied. The group says learners should find ways to relax if they feel overwhelmed and possibly anxious. When it's time now uh, for you to go and write the exam, make sure that the day before the exam, you do not cram. This is the day for you to do a short revision where you just browse through everything that you studied when you did your whole preparation weeks before because there isn't procrastination here. Um, that is what you do the day before, but you do not cram. You do not force things into your head the day before the exam. What happens is that you will get to the exam and then you're going to be very anxious. You're going to be very nervous. And some people actually experience panic attacks. They experience blackouts which is not healthy, it is not good for you, okay? So make sure that the day before the exam, you would have studied everything and you're just revising. And on the day of the exam, you arrive at least 45 minutes before the, the, the time starts for you to write so that you can get the time to sit down, to breathe, 
and um, you ha can have time to just collect your thoughts. And this also helps you to avoid things like panic attacks and blackouts during your exam. And during your whole entire time of preparing for these exams, make sure that you provide yourself with self-care, okay? Make sure that you take time out to take care of yourself do things that make you happy. This could be playing soccer. It could be playing with the children in the streets. It could be going out for a movie. Make sure that you use time away from your books to make sure that you take care of your mental health by taking care of yourself. To this now, the Basic Education Department has reiterated the importance of subjects such as life skills and life orientation. The department is holding comprehensive sexuality education workshops for senior management teams and school governing bodies in Gauteng. CSE aims to ensure that the department assists learners to build an understanding of concepts, content, values and attitudes related to sexuality, sexual behaviour change, as well as leading safe and healthy lives. The Gauteng Education Department says it's important to know how many learners have received the scripted lesson plans. The number of learners receiving the scripted lesson plans that is very critical. You know, we've got schools already that have started, but it was on a more sporadic basis. There would be set of forms, the documents, and the books that uh, uh, Virginia was, was uh, showing you. Those school, those books, the learner books and the, and the teacher guide, educator guide, those are going to be uh, delivered directly to your schools. So you are not going, for the purposes of the workshops, you have seen that you have only received the copies. But that is, what we are not, that is not what is going to be delivered in those schools. And one educator said, you know what, I don't like this black and white thing. Even if I want to read it after hours, really it puts me down. I need something with color. So we are assuring here to say, National has indicated they've got all your your databases in terms of your learner enrollment. Uh, so that information is there. So they will be delivered. Although these workshops are being rolled out throughout the country, Gauteng seems to be leading the pack. They've also engaged teachers about the importance of using the worksheets. So if we use our worksheets, let us become engaged. I'm on the board and see them listening to you. So, like, I have explained what stigma does. What is stigma? That is now the definition of stigma. Okay. And then now after, after that, grade five, you know what stigma is and what it does to the other person. Okay. Because stigma is negative. And then what we need to do when we use ugly names uh, to call other people what it does they will drop out of school they will always be sad and lonely they will sit all alone and then sometimes they even commit suicide they kill themselves because we stigmatize them the chairperson for the south african national commission for unesco says he is confident that the work done will be far more visible in the country for the next four years. Basic Education Minister Angie Motsecha welcomed the new commissioners of the South African National Commission for UNESCO and during her speech, she spoke about the importance of UNESCO to South Africa. UNESCO's mission is to contribute to peace and security by promoting collaboration among nations through education, science, communication and information and culture. A key role of the National Commission, um, and, and one that I will give particular attention to during these four years, is twofold. On the one hand, it is about giving effect to the UNESCO programs and activities here in South Africa. Um, that means that the um, National Commission plays the role of uh, bridge builder, between the various government departments um, that are directly implicated in the work of UNESCO, as well as non-government and community-based organizations. On the other hand, of course, there is a great expectation that we should also shape the UNESCO agenda from our own vantage point. So in as much as we carry responsibility to give effect 
the UNESCO program, it's equally important for us um, to shape, inform, by way of resolutions, uh, by way of informed discussion and expert opinions in the various UNESCO um, uh, fora um, and agencies. Meanwhile, the chairperson of the Education Sector Committee of the SA NETCOM for UNESCO says it is important that everyone is committed to high quality education. Now this education sector committee is, it comprises people from all kinds of, 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 of sectors, NGOs, other government departments, but these are all people who have an interest in education. Just to get an understanding of how important the, 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 the sector committee is, education in UNESCO has the biggest, um, is the biggest sector. Across we driving through UNESCO, Global Education uh, 2050. And that's the agenda that we are also part of. And so the role of this new uh, committee, which has been established and will, will be in place for four years, is to make sure that we also, within South Africa, make sure that all of us together, whether it's the private sector or government, that we are committed to driving within the country education of high quality, education that is inclusive, but also education you know, for lifelong learning, because education has no end. It has no real beginning, it has no end. And therefore that's what we, we, we are doing. And we are very excited to be doing this but mainly what we want to do as the sector is not just to drive those uh, programs within South Africa, we want to be sure that as a committee we can also influence um, the agenda of UNESCO and we're beginning to see already how we can do that. Stay tuned. After the break, we go to Nongoma in KwaZulu-Natal where we hear from Vuzmuzi Kumalo, the principal at Mlokotwa Secondary School about their plans for grade 12 learners. I am a nurturer, like you. you. Real men stand against gender-based violence. I get hurt, like you. If I am a victim of violence, I too will not be ashamed to report violence and abuse. I hate it when someone violates me, like you. In a violent situation, there is power in walking away. I will not take part in fights at school. All I want is to feel safe, to feel loved, and to be free to show love, like you. I cry when I'm hurt, because to feel is to be human. I pledge to be more open about my emotions. Make it part of the new normal for young boys to be nurtured and loved, to freely express themselves, and to show love in a safe, inclusive way. We have different gender identities, but first, we are human. If you need assistance to help your child, contact Childline on 08000 55 5. Welcome back. This has been a difficult year for the matric class of 2021 and equally as tough for their teachers. Like many others, learners at Mlokotwa Secondary School did not get to complete their grade 11 curriculum due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But their principal, Vuzmuzi Kumalo, says he and all members of his staff are confident that the 223 learners will pass this year, especially after achieving an impressive 95.7% pass in 2020. The boarding school based in Nongoma in Guazulu Natal had to close this year for a week to deal with COVID cases. Kumalo says the school is focusing a great deal on their maths and physical science marks. We've got a, a, quite a number of, of programs, especially concerning because our, our main focus is mathematics and, phys and physical science. So we run morning classes uh, for both mathematics and physical science. And we, we've also got uh, programs whereby uh, the mathematics teachers and physical science teachers appoint uh, tutors. Uh, from, from the learners and they, they form study groups of maximum of five. 
and uh, we, we, we make sure that when, when, there is a, when, when our study program runs, which runs from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock, uh, those learners are working in groups and the teacher come now and then to support them with the, with, with the material. COVID-19 brought with it a few challenges, especially for the basic education sector and schools. As a boarding school, the main challenge that we have, especially this year with the COVID regulations, is that now and then there must be programs that, that you do with the learners. It may be entertainment, it may be social programs, uh, but, but this year, because of COVID, we are unable to do those, 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 those programs. And uh, we, we, we see that uh, there, there are some evidence of bullying that happens now and then, because that is the main thing with the boarding school. Uh, we've got really to have good programs for bullying. But, but we are supported by, by, by our district, uh, because now and then they take our learners. Uh, to workshops uh, for bullying. Uh, this week I uh, released 19 boys, grade 8 and 9, uh, because that is the main program. That is the main problem that we have. Yeah. Kumalo says he is grateful for the support he received from the school governing body. Uh, the SGP of Mdawata is very supportive. Uh, first of all, what I may highlight is, is the harmony that I've seen uh, in the past three years. Uh, they are working together as a team. And the, they vocalize the fact that they are here to support the principal of the school in order that the school functions well and it's got um, adequate resources. And we've got people who have got capacity uh, to, to, to manage the portfolios that they are given, mm -hmm. especially the chairperson, the, the, the treasurer, uh, people who are well informed. With more than 700 children at the boarding school, the principal says they are aware of the huge task at hand and has this message for parents and guardians. Uh, I'd like to thank the parents for choosing us as a school. And the message that I would like to convey to the parents is that we are a school which, which, which cares, we care about their children. And we, we assume the role of, 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 being, of being parents. And uh, it, it's, 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 we, it's very good, uh, the relationship that we see between us and the parents, especially when they come over the weekends to visit their children, because we, we don't want a, a learner who's, who's abandoned at the hostel. We want a learner who's fully supported. But my main message is that we are a school which gives care, and we are a school which is very concerned about the performance, academic performance of the children. We know that the main reason why they sacrifice and bring their, their, their children to boarding school is that they want them to achieve excellent results. They want, they want them to, 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 to get something better uh, compared to, 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 to the local school. So we are doing our best to make sure that their learners are enriched. Stay tuned. After the break, we hear about how Nongoma Primary School in KwaZulu Natal promotes reading. Our universities are very important institutions. Many people tend to know them just for teaching and learning. Yes, they are for teaching and learning. But also our universities are research centers. A lot of knowledge that we have generated to deal with COVID-19, even the identification of these new variants, like the latest one, Delta, has been done through researchers who are based in our universities. Lecturing staff across the board will have to be prioritized because they tend to be more on the elder side and they are the ones who are actually interacting with more and more and different kinds of students. We are not only looking at vaccinating the sector only, we are also having now vaccination centers at our universities and Tibet colleges that are servicing the rest of the community because we aren't jealous about it. Vaccinating is necessary and it is not dangerous. Instead, in the end, that's what will help us to defeat this virus. It's not a saw, it's a small needle. And even those people who are afraid of needles, they should just uh, be able to go and take the vaccine. 
The fact that the World Health Organization has asked us to be the first technology transfer hub to produce vaccines outside of North America and Europe is a vote of confidence in our scientists and in South Africa's science system and productive capacities. Welcome back. Now, let's move over to Nongoma Primary School. It has 1,108 learners, and what makes this school special is that it is an inclusive schooling system. This means that all children are in the same classroom, whether they are physically or otherwise challenged. Principal Sizagele Banda explains how they have worked hard to support all learners, including those with learning difficulties. Where we support our learners, uh, we know that if you are a, an inclusive school, there are so many challenges that the school normally face with. But we do have our remedial classes where we have got a person who specializes with that class particular, where that person is giving a, a, a support, where we look at the child, where we feel in USNA 1 and SNA 2, and then the learner, we involve our parents even with the progressed learners, we also invite parents to tell them each and every term how their learners are performing. Same thing applies with AMA learners who has AMA learners who has AMA learning difficulties, uh, maybe dyslexic learners or learners that are living with albinism. We include parents to be part of the journey to understand what kind of a support does the learner need and also with a support from the department as well we also have some psychologists private psychologists who assist us in assessing our learners with their learning difficulty long as the parents agree with us to to work with those uh, private uh, psychologist so by doing so we are able to support amalena's aid to accordingly banda says she is grateful to the parents who have understood the importance of learners having homework in order to cover as much of the curriculum as possible so we have realized what the are gaps since we know that 29 2020 we started to experience this pandemic but as educators, we are trying our all best to, to cover those gaps, especially with curriculum coverage, uh, where we have our um, homeworks given to the learners, and also we have, ex um, we have uh, aftercare classes where we are trying by all means to cover the curriculum co coverage for, for the learners. And then also with the support from the parents that we are getting or that we are receiving, it also assists the school to, 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 to adjust with, with, with curriculum. And then also with the teachers, we have seen our gaps, we sit down and we have got a, a plan in place on how to catch up with our curriculum. And also with those learners, who has been affected with COVID-19. We also have a plan in place when they come back where the educator will create some time to, 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 to support or to give support to individual learners. Space is proving to be the school's biggest challenge. Banda says because of where the school is located and its performance, Parents want their children to attend Nongoma Primary School. She says this causes a problem as she does not have enough space to accommodate all learners who have enrolled to attend the school. Since I, I, I'm in, in town, many people, due to our hard work and effort and the performance of the school, uh, I won't be shy to say that we are the best school. So all parents, they want their learners to come to our school. But unfortunately, the challenge is we cannot accommodate all the learners who want to be part of this school because of the space. Uh, we are just 
pleading from the department if we can have maybe look at the structure of the school and see how can we add more classes since we are also inclusive school um, where we support learners with uh, learning difficulties so parents really bring their kids here to our school because they know the kind of support that we can provide to their learners. Staying with the school, the principal says reading is important for her and her teachers. They have come up with innovative ways to keep learners engaged in reading. Each grade gets a turn to be in the school library in a bid to encourage learners to read. They have even set up a mobile library so learners can continue reading at home and during school holidays. We are in the library where you could see grade 7. It's their period for EEE library. Each and every class they've got a, a period where they come and read in the library. Our reading is done into three portions. The first one is where we have got a special beehive scheme where the learner will go and read at home and the following day the teacher will be able to test the reading and then also we have got this section at the library where they come for an hour just to read and do some library activities that are promoting eee reading right now as a school we have moved to a digital library where the learners will be able to have an access in their cell phone at home or in their computers at home, they'll be able to get a, a library at home instead of going to the library itself. But now it's going to be easily accessible in their home. And that brings us to the end of this week's News Roundup on Channel 122 on Open View, on YouTube and on Bricks TV Channel 509 Starset. Remember to stay safe and to comply with all the COVID health protocols. We end this bulletin with a reading piece from a grade 6 learner, Lula Makaki, at Nongoma Primary School. She's reading The Boy Who Cried Wolf. Until next time, it's goodbye from me and the entire team. Thank you for watching. There once lived a naughty shepherd boy named Ralph. He was still a wee lad and wanted to jump around play and do no real work. But alas, he was made to take the boring ship out to the graze in the green meadows every single day. Oh, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored. He sang in a sad little voice on an afternoon. He sat and wondered, then stood up and wondered, and finally laid down and wondered what he could do. And then, and then an idea struck to him. Wolf, it's a wolf. He cried at the top of his lungs. Somebody save my ship! Bah! The big wolf is going to get me! Help! The, the village baker, the mayor, the butcher, and the wagoner all ran out with rakes and muskets, ready to beat up the bad mean wolf. <laughs>